Well, welcome to one more uh, live talks here in the Kigali Global Dialogue. I am Leonardo Paz Neves from Getulio Vargas Foundation, and we are here at the session BRICS in Africa. I have four of my friends here. I have on my very right uh, HHS Vishhanin from Distinguished Fellow from Observer Research Foundation in India, and then Igor Makarov from Associate Professor from the National Research University in the Higher School of Economics in Russia. Uh, then Pilani Mathembu, Executive Director from Institute of Global Dialogue, South Africa, and N, uh, Research from BRICS Research Center in Guangzhou. Well, uh, BRICS is a new thing. I mean, we're not a very new thing right now. We have 10 years old, but it's still a new thing in the sense that how we institutionalize our talks, our partners. And we have here one from each country to discuss a little bit about how our platform, how BRICS can uh, impact in Africa. How can African countries can draw something to benefit themselves from Africa? So I'll start with my friend from India. Please give a pitch about uh, what you think it's most important from there right now. See, BRICS started as a grouping of emerging economies, uh, which had a great success uh, in globalization, even though the rules were heavily loaded against them. So South-South cooperation to begin with was not an area of focus of BRICS. But the BRICS agenda has evolved over time, and that is where Africa comes in, because BRICS wants to engage with the other regions of the world and see what we can do. And Africa fits in perfectly because the kind of issues that BRICS addresses are also very close to African heart, particularly the reform of the globe, uh, Bretton Woods institutions uh, and also new standards and benchmarking and also the best practices in health education, etc. And also the most important thing in global governance. So it naturally fits in. And one of the practical things of cooperation of BRICS and uh, Africa is the opening of the branch of uh, New Development Bank mm -hmm. in Johannesburg, mainly intended for infrastructure funding in Africa. Which is an amazing thing. It's very important in Africa, infrastructure, core business in South Africa cooperation. Igor, what do you think about it? Uh, I would focus on a little bit different aspect. I think that... Uh, BRICS countries are the first countries in the world who are moving from uh, low and middle uh, level of incomes to high level of incomes in uh, the world where climate change is uh, one of the major dangers and uh, in the fossil fuel constraints world. And so BRICS countries uh, should, if they just replicate the models of development and the models of patterns of consumption of Western countries, it would be the catastrophe. And so BRICS countries need some different models of development, some different paths uh, to the high incomes, which are more eco-friendly, which uh, are more consistent with the uh, goals to coping with, of co coping with climate change. But African countries are those who are following. And for African countries, these models which should be elaborated by BRICS, uh, they should be the example, the template. And I think that BRICS mission in Africa, it should lay in, in this area, first of all. I see, so somehow to uh, give to them some r frameworks that they can uh, mirror themselves and try to make a new kind of development. So, okay, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flanny, what do you think? Flanny? Well, I actually think, um, you know, the topic itself, I think BRICS, the relevance of BRICS, Africa has been very important to making BRICS relevant. Remember that South Africa was not initially a member of the BRICS. And I actually think that the grouping would not have gained as much currency um, had there not been a representative from Africa. Because there's no way that the BRICS uh, could have um, uh, stated that it, 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 it's out there for the interests of the developing world without um, um, actually having a representative in, 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 in Africa. So the inclusion of South Africa was a very important part of the development of BRICS. And I think we've seen some innovations uh, with the inclusion of South Africa. I mean, you go back to 2013, uh, when the Durban summit was held um, in, in South Africa, and South Africa proposed uh, for the first time in that summitry to actually invite African uh, countries and African leaders uh, to join the BRICS summit. And ever since that 2013 uh, summit, you've seen that the BRICS uh, uh, grouping is no longer just interested in just insulating itself as the five countries, but every subsequent summit thereafter has had some kind of a regional 
um, uh, outreach. And that was largely uh, a South African innovation uh, that, you know, that came in 2013. And I think that adds legitimacy to the grouping. And now we're talking uh, concepts such as BRICS Plus. So I think you know, the inclusion of South Africa and uh, by including South Africa, including the continent of Africa, I think it's been a, a, an important legitimizing um, and innovative aspect of the BRICS grouping. Very interesting uh, how Africa gives legitimacy to the group, and it's interesting that this model is replicated in Brazil. And when Bra when this mm. BRICS summit was organized in Brazil, we invited the, the whole uh, well, big parts of Latin America uh, mm. to be part of it, and we thought so Argentina by that time mm. willing to be part of BRICS. There was interesting, uh, a very interesting comments from a uh, Brazilian diplomat that he was not sure if BRICS was a very good thing. But he was sure that not being a brick was a very bad thing. Mm. So very uh, catchy idea how bricks is spending and store, becoming an important uh, block. And please, your pitch. Mm. We think generally BRICS countries are the first mover in uh, developing countries, in developing their economy like uh, China. Uh, we have experienced many years of uh, struggle, of experience, and we uh, have some uh, maybe lessons to share with uh, other developing countries. So uh, this has been reflected also with our countries' cooperation with the African countries. For example, last year, uh, 2018's uh, Beijing Summit the, on the Forum of uh, China-African Cooperation. Um, we uh, not only focus on trade or investment, now we focus more on capacity building, on um, uh, building a clean, uh, environmental friendly environment, on education, on corporate social responsibility. I think this is a win-win cooperation. This is also a platform for uh, all these developing countries to uh, show to the whole world our responsibility for the shared future of mankind. So by focusing more on human capital, on clean energy, on the common prosperity, so we can move forward together. Mm -hmm. the, uh, when we talk about the BRICS uh, outreach, he talked about it, that's very important because it has become a kind of a inbuilt thing with each summit. Even though BRICS is not thinking of expanding formally, these outreach programs have helped greatly. And this also learning from each other, it flows both ways. For example, we can learn a lot from this country where we are sitting today, Rwanda, on the gender empowerment. 65 to 70% of the members of parliament in Rwanda are women. And none of the BRICS countries have reached that level. No. So there are things BRICS can also learn from Africa. And when we talk of uh, outreach to Africa, two things we have to remember if we have to be successful. Because the Africans are also interested in changes in global governance structures. So we have to take them along as other developing countries. But in Africa, two recent game-changing developments we have to take into account. One is the 2063 a vision document of Africa, which gives the roadmap for African development. And the second is the recent creation of the African uh, continental free trade area. These are two game-changing events where uh, BRICS has to leverage this for greater engagement with Africa. And some of you guys have an idea how can the BRICS take advantage of these new developments in Africa, especially in trades or investment infrastructure? Well, I think, uh, you know, what you, you are already mentioning, you mentioned the recent FOCAC um, uh, summit. And I think what this creates, you know, this African continental free trade area, it doesn't only create opportunities for African stakeholders, you know, to move around to trade with each other more, but individually BRICS countries have in recent years um, expanded, you know, their relations uh, with uh, the continent. And I think through fora such as the FOCAC, your India Africa Forum, uh, summit. Forum summit, you know, Russia will be having a, uh, a summit uh, this year. Um, also, Brazil had uh, under under Lula had you you still had this Africa South America, you know, summit which has kind of been uh, at low level right now, but 
I think individually, uh, BRICS countries realize the opportunities uh, within the continent. I mean, there's, um, there's, there's infrastructure that needs to be built uh, throughout the continent. There's a growing middle class uh, within the continent. There's greater interconnectivity uh, that is taking place. And in fact, I think it's the, it's, it's the BRICS countries which were important in actually also reshaping the global narrative on Africa. Because remember that in the year 2000, when uh, The Economist came out with a front cover uh, uh, story saying Africa, the hopeless continent, at the very same time, China was rolling out the red carpet and preparing for the first uh, forum on Africa, uh, uh, forum on China-Africa cooperation. Mm -hmm. You know, so that told you that uh, countries within BRICS are not looking at Africa as, you know, a, a hopeless case that needs to be assisted through official development assistance but they saw opportunities because they themselves are countries that were emerging you know, from poverty um, and understood that there's great opportunities in tackling um, socioeconomic problems. The, the same economist, 13 years later, yes. brought out an issue and the cover story was Africa is a continent of the future. Mm. Yes. So yeah. they had yeah, to in their own words. Exactly. I want yes. to... Sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Thanks, first, okay. yes, thank you. Yes, and we noticed that because of today's uh, rapid development of uh, high technology, in fact, we can maybe uh, create new models of uh, cooperation. We noticed that um, African continent, uh, where people use mobile phones before uh, telephones, and we have. Uh, airplanes before maybe highways so um, China with this high tech uh, we maybe uh, can cooperate in education in um, technical training in medical uh, cooperation like uh, even a remote diagnose like uh, using artificial intelligence, using virtual reality to instead of just focusing on trade and uh, uh, infrastructure, of course these are always important and uh, China has um, advocated many measures to encourage import from Africa because we understand it is no good to have uh, all this imbalance in, in trade. But we think that uh, as um, the uh, American country, uh, African countries all have very high expectation on their social development, so there's more field for cooperation. Igor, you were saying? Yeah, I think that uh, cooperation of BRICS with Africa may also provide BRICS countries with more information about this continent, because in Russia there is a huge lack of information about Africa. It is mm -hmm. like considered as a black box, as a single continent with no distinction between countries, uh, the continent of like elephants, uh, uh, poverty, natural resources, and bloody dictators, nothing else. Mm -hmm. And now, probably this year after the Russia-African uh, summit would be held, this uh, perception would, would change and uh, it would be uh, the great step forward in the cooperation of Russia with uh, African countries, with different African countries, with distinctions between African countries. Because Rwanda and uh, uh, like Congo are very different countries and in each of them Russia has some opportunities but these opportunities are different and but it should be understood in Russia as well. I would just say exactly the same thing I mean w building up of what Pilani said and you told my line uh, BRICS gave an opportunity to us to know much more much more about South Africa it's the same in Brazil I mean we have always has these footholds on speaking uh, Portuguese speaking countries there in Angola, uh, Mozambique and others but we scale that up. So we are out of time. Third, I would like to have 30 seconds from each of you to just to say one message about what do you think BRICS could impact on Africa? I mean, what's the main, yeah. uh, well, the main idea? See, all the five BRICS countries individually have very good relations with individual African countries and the continent as a whole. So this can be leveraged for a larger BRICS cooperation with Africa. That will be my message. Perfect. Your message? I think that uh, through investment, through trade, through, through the development of human capital, uh, BRICS countries may help uh, make Africa the continent of opportunities. Perfect. Pilani, your message? I think in the next, uh, beginning the next decade of uh, BRICS cooperation, I think uh, it will be important to 
go beyond uh, the state-to-state -state, uh, cooperation, uh, enhance people-to-people -people relations, enhance cooperation among think tanks, among academic institutions, and through that, I think the relations can actually be deepened. Perfect. And your message? I think with the advancement of high technology in BRICS countries, we can provide mo more solutions to the health care issues in Africa countries, and we can provide more education opportunities for the young generation. Then they have the ability to meet the new challenges and to have ideal job for better life. Excellent. I think all very good messages, and I think Africa is still here, the content of the future indivi in, with individual countries. Well, thank you very much for your comments, and thank you very much for being here with us.